There's 40 degrees, winds over 60 miles an hour. That's the great north of Canada. Yeah. My name is Cyril Choquet, and I spend my life traveling the world chasing monster fish. I love pushing my limits, and that's why I want to try surviving conditions that I've never seen before. Canada's great white north. Everything is complicated here. It's cold, the ice is very thick, but also dangerously unstable in certain places. The distances between fishing spots are very long, exhausting and risky. It's also the territory of some of the world's most dangerous predators and wild animals that can sometimes be a threat to humans. Ice fishing is an ancient technique that's been used for survival by the native people of the north for generations. I've fished on ice before, but never in such extreme conditions as in the Great White North. Oh yeah, that's a big one. I know that some monster fish can be caught in these icy conditions. And this time, I'm here on a mission to catch one of the Arctic's strongest fighters. A fish. A fish known here as the Laker. I'm arriving in Shepherdville, a small town located in the far north of Canada, more than a thousand miles north of New York City, on the Quebec Labrador border. Shepherdville is in the heart of the territory of the Inu First Nation, the native people of the region. I fished here before in the summer and got devoured by bugs. Oh, but I loved it. And I caught some beautiful lake trout. Around here, they're called lakers. But this time, I'm back on a mission to catch a real monster lake trout on the ice. Ah! I'm meeting up with a group of Inu fishermen, but they're already at their camp, and they didn't leave me much info on how to get there. Apparently, the guys told me, you know, we left you a, a pickup truck with a skido in it. And that must be this one there, because otherwise, you know, like pickups, it's all the drive here. You know, like this, just pickups everywhere. And the key should be in the, uh, in the gas. Oh my gosh, man. Ah, it's cold. <laughs> what am I doing here? Honestly, I could have gone anywhere in the Caribbean and Mexico. <laughs> Crystal, blue water, turquoise waters, you know, big fish, everything. No, I just had to come here and freeze my, freeze my, you know what? But it's beautiful though. And it's gonna be cool. <laughs> yes, it's gonna be cool. Really cool. No kidding. Today's temperature in Shepherdville, minus 40. Well, welcome to the Arctic. By the way, dog sleds are barely used here anymore. Nowadays, people use snowmobiles. I have to stop at a local restaurant to get the exact coordinates. In addition to the language spoken by the Inu, people here also speak French. They're sending me 70 miles into the woods to meet someone I don't even know who that is exactly. But uh, and uh, just uh, the only thing I have is GPS coordinates and a snowmobile. I gotta get going because I have 70 miles to travel and no idea what condition the trail is in. <laughs> it should take me about five hours to get there and I need to make it before dark. But at least I have GPS coordinates and some experience with snowmobiles. But it's been a while. That's gonna be epic. And here we go, Canada's great white north. Let's try to stay on the trails. All right, it's all good. Straight ahead, another 50 miles. Here we go again. I've still got a good ways to go, but I'm taking a beating from this ride, and I'm really starting to get tired. At this point, there's nothing I can do except go forward. I have to get there before nightfall. My snowmobile is flipped on its side, and I can't get it straight again. I'm really stuck. And just to make things worse, this five feet of powder, and every time I hit the gas, I just go deeper and deeper. Oh no. Oh, 
I'm five miles from the camp. I just did uh, 65 miles, and uh, the total was 70 miles. I just jammed myself right here. Now I know why I got stuck, you see? I think it is. The only thing I can do now is wait for the guys to come and get me. But I have to stay warm. In the Amazon, soldiers build fires to keep animals away. Here, it's so you don't freeze to death. Plus, this should help my friends find me. I just hope that wolves are scared of fire, because they don't sound very far. Yes. Let me tell you, I've never been so happy to hear the sound of a motor. Let me tell you, I'm really happy to see these guys, because I was pretty sure I was going to spend the night here. They freak me out because they, they're telling me, I always thought that, that wolves wouldn't come close to you too far, but actually they tell me otherwise. They, they all tell me that they will. They will come. In any case, I'm happy to see you guys. Thank you very much. It's really cool. Chani. You haven't done that half of the time? It's clearly not the first time that these guys pull out a snowmobile. They know exactly what to do. I got really lucky. Tonight, I get to sleep in a warm bed before going fishing tomorrow. Rule number one when traveling alone on a snowmobile, never leave the trail. I think I'll let the guys take the lead to the camp. It's actually hot this morning. Minus 30. It's so beautiful. It's so peaceful and quiet. You can't hear a thing at all. Except for the uh, nasty, <laughs> nasty cold wind blowing in my ears. This morning, the guys decided I should have my own gun while I'm here. He's <laughs> 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 They want me to have a gun with me because they say it's, uh, it's good for two reasons. If you get stuck in the woods like I did yesterday, you can have, uh, you can have that for protection. So you, could be, uh, you could be attacked by wolves or even actually surprisingly, they were saying a moose could charge you. And, uh, and if you get stuck for a long period of time, then you can start hunting for, for survival purposes. I've fished in remote places a lot. But this is the first time that I actually need a gun. I might as well get some practice. Huh? All right, it's time to go check out the ice for some lake trout. Andre does all his fishing using a traditional technique. He puts beta lines through holes in the ice, and he'll come back later to see what he's caught. First Nations people are the only ones allowed to use natural bait in this part of Quebec. And traditionally, they keep the fish for the community. Check out the size of this laker that he's pulling out of this hole. Yes. And imagine, they get much bigger than that. You see, the technique that they're using is pretty smart. You know, they attach the line to the tree. At the end of the line is the baited hook. And when the fish takes the bait, is gonna start pulling on that line and they make that special knot so that first they can tell that there's a fish because if the, the knot is come undone, that means that there's a fish that's pulled on the line. But what it does is that when the fish takes the bait, it's gonna start pulling some line. The knot is gonna come apart, giving some, the fish some slack. So it goes, it goes, it takes off and then all of a sudden, bang, he's gonna reach the end of the line. Bang. Oh, look at the size of that lake trout. That's a beautiful fish. Just barely jigging that, uh, that piece of uh, bait in the hole. He pulled a little bit, a little one. 
the, the bait stayed overnight, and he dropped that same bait again in the same hole and just barely jigged it. Boom! Hooked that big uh, trail. That's got to be 15 pounds for sure. Man, that's frustrating to have to fish with this. <laughs> Plastic bait. Vraiment, ça, si je te claque une trente là. This little rod is actually made for ice fishing, because if I was using a regular rod, I'd be at least six feet away from the hole and not be able to feel the bite so well. Surprisingly, these rods are very strong and can handle a lot. Oh! Oh, oh no! This guy's killing me! I can't believe it! <laughs> We're gonna try a different spot, and this time I'm starting to fish first. <laughs> If they put any bait in the water, I think I don't stand a chance at all. Ce que je voudrais faire, c'est faire peut-être plusieurs trous, puis changer, jigger dans un, tu jig dans l'autre, c'est ça, comme tu fais? Ouais. Well, guys, if you've never seen this, it's a nice drill or a nice auger. That would be the right term for it. And what it is, it's basically sort of like a, a chainsaw motor on a on a giant corkscrew. And it's gonna get me through the ice. Il y a de l'essence en moi dans votre machine là. Le chaud. Le chaud. Le chaud. Let me tell you, ice fishing, it's, it's definitely a sport. Drill, drill, try to drilling three holes like I just did. You'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. You don't want to leave your hands exposed to the, to the wind too long. Even if uh, the wind is in my back, it's still nasty. All right, let's catch a monster lake here on that jig. But the guys don't seem convinced by my artificial lures. Yes. Oh, stupid. Pas la bouger en fait. Oh, elle est revenue. C'est ton absence, ça avait dit. Il est pas assez gros. No wonder. These guys use giant hooks that are normally used for sharks. Let me tell you, the Inus, they don't fool around with their fishing. They're after, they're after monsters. Comme ça, je, comme ça. Oh, c'est elle que j'avais au bout de la ligne. <laughs> tu me l'as piqué. Uh, sometimes fishing is about patience, but in this case, let me tell you, it's about willpower because it's it's cold. If this was a competition, they'd be destroying me right now. I don't even have a catch to my name yet. But I can't give up. Even with my artificial lures, I know I'll land one eventually. Uh, fish on, fish on. I got one! Ha <laughs> oh. ha See, that's what I was telling you. Look how cool it is to fight a fish on such a tiny rod. You feel the, you feel the fight. Oh. He doesn't like the sight of that hole. Okay, here it is, it's coming. Okay, here it is. Come on, fish, show me your face. Yes! Oh. <laughs> yes! My premier! What? My first lake trout! Beautiful! Man, that was quite a fight. Ça te dérange pas, t'es sûr si je leur mets à l'eau? Non. I put this fish back as the guys told me they've caught enough for the community. One down. Woohoo! Yes! It was my first trout on the ice, but it's far from the monster I'm looking for. It's not gonna happen today though. It's getting dark and we have to head back to camp. Andre caught half a dozen lakers today. And guess what we're eating tonight? Grouse, or ptarmigan to be exact. Man, that's gonna be good. That's a wild ptarmigan right there, and I've never tried it before. And uh, caribou filet mignon. That's gonna be, that's gonna be awesome. The guys have been here for a few days and are starting to get tired. They want to head back to Chefreville tonight. Okay. 
But at least we have a great meal to recharge our batteries before our long and very cold ride back. Mmm, caribou is so good. Hey, you want to see how cold it is here? Like, I'm not joking. I opened the door earlier today, and now look. <laughs> now you know what I'm talking about. That's not smoke. There's no fire outside. It's it's the cold. It's just like a it's like you open a, a freezer. Thank you very much, guys. Honestly. It's too bad that my friends want to head back tonight. I was really starting to get the hang of this ice fishing thing. Well, I guess I'm gonna have to figure out a plan B. After a long snowmobile ride, I'm back in Shefferville. I may not have caught that giant lake trout I was hoping for, but I have a good idea where to find it. On the ancestral land of my old friends, Christian and Albert. I fished with them during the summer, and the action was crazy. <laughs> and the flies were even crazier. I got in touch with Christian, and I'll be heading out to their camp by snowmobile tomorrow. So today, I've got a little time to kill. Ouais, on va aller, on y va maintenant? Ouais. Excellent ça. All right, the kids want to go riding some powder. And they even want to tie a, snow, a rope to the skidoo and do some snowboarding in the back, of which I've never done, but that'll be cool. The snowboarding was really fun, but it's a giant lake trout with my name on it, 185 miles away from here, on Christian and Albert's land. That means 10 hours of riding to catch a fish. The great news is that Alexander, a friend from around here, has offered to get me there. And tonight, he's invited me for a traditional Inu supper. Bonjour Alexandre, comment vas-tu? Aside from Alexander, I'm also greeted by the chief of the village and other members of the community. Caribou meat is on the menu, and so is the head. There's no waste whatsoever in the traditional ways. Before eating, the village elder, Ms. André, wants to have a word. She explains that she's proud to share this traditional supper with us all. Okay. It's crazy how much their, their, their diet consists mainly of meat. Uh, it's, uh, they were nomads, right? So they would need the, the protein to travel long distances and hunt. And I don't know if you know that one, but... Uh, but vegetarians is an old uh, Inu word that stands for bad hunter. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Comment on dit merci déjà en Inu? Tenus kometen. Tenus kometen. Tenus kometen. True to the Inu ways, after a good meal, it's time for some music and dancing. I've got a very big day tomorrow, but I'm also a fisherman. And Chani, one of the guys I was fishing with at the beginning of my trip, has invited me to do a night run for Lakers nearby. Yep, yep, yep. It's a Laker. All right. Nice fish, man. Nice Laker. You're going to eat it, right? Because the snow is not good for the trout. I'm pretty sure there's another one down there. Come on, man. Come on, give me a chance. Let me jig a little bit. You're getting all the fish excited. Yeah, that seems to be how it works around here, right? I cheese them and you catch them. <laughs> oh, fish on, fish on. Oh, man, that's a nice fish, too. I hope I shot a 40 pounder or you'll break your line. Yeah, yeah. Like All right. Uh, yes. Nice fish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> nice liquor. Not a monster, but. But it's a. The rice pieces. It's definitely a nice fish, but far from the mustard trout I want. All right, yeah. <laughs> yes. Beautiful catch. And here we go for a very long 185 mile snowmobile ride. If we're lucky, it'll take us nine or 10 hours to get to the camp. The ride is brutal, and there's absolutely nothing on the way there, not even a trail. We only have a GPS and a satellite phone, just in case things go bad. Alexander is a great guide and really knows his way around here. But when you're in the middle of a huge lake, sudden blizzards will sometimes hit you out of nowhere. 
There is nothing you can do but stop and wait for it to pass by. Minus 40 degrees, winds over 60 miles an hour. After what seemed like forever, the blizzards eventually died down and we can keep going. I'm completely exhausted from all the non-stop riding, but for Alexander, he's just another walk in the park. Honestly, I'm surprised that we actually made it to the camp. <laughs> Christian invites us into his tent for some tea so we can warm up. I'm totally exhausted from the trip, and I really need a good night's rest. Tomorrow, we're going out to find some monster lakers. This is how every day starts in the north. Six layers of clothing are needed to create the insulation necessary to be able to spend 10 hours on the ice. This adds about 40 pounds to my body weight. Looks like I'm about to climb the Everest. I know, I'm going fishing. <laughs> Christian knows a really good spot for lake trout just at the foot of some rapids, but we have to be careful here. The thickness of the ice varies because of the underlying currents. Now let me tell you, this is one of the most extreme fishing conditions, if not the most extreme fishing conditions I've ever faced. I think if you get stuck here, your life expectancy, not very long. Aside from being extreme, ice fishing is also very tricky. It's truly the definition of looking for a needle in a haystack. I'm fishing in a 10 inch hole when a lake is about 10 miles long. So the fish could be anywhere. We drill another hole, hoping to hit the right spot. But the thickness of the ice is just ridiculous. We can't even go through it with that drill. It's uh, more than 45 inches thick. 100 yards from here, we drilled another hole there, and it was this thick. <laughs> That's it. You know, only uh, this much ice. And here, we can't even go through it. This kind of ice is extremely dangerous and has taken several Inu lives. Do you know people who are tombés on the ice? Yes, people who are on the ice. The only thing I'm telling me is that they, they lost a few people from the, uh, from the nation actually under the ice over the years. It's scary. My friends have to set up their net under the ice, so they send me up river to a spot where there should be some huge lakers. I'm a little stressed now that I'm alone. If the ice breaks and I go underwater, I'm done. Ah, it's nasty on the hands. After the stories I've been hearing, I'm kind of nervous to drill holes on this river. But there's supposed to be some big lake trout around here. See, that's the snow. But here, here, I'm in some slush. I mean, it's just wet snow. And the ice is right there. So when I drill, the ice is actually underneath the, the slushy part, the wet part here. So when I I drill right through it, that's why the machine almost went under, because he went under, he went into the slush. It's pretty tricky, huh? I don't even see the hole there, I just see slush, I don't even see where it is, but it's drilled through. Actually, when spring arrives, the snow becomes so heavy that it starts pushing down on the ice. The water is pushed up through the cracks and over the ice from the shores. Then the water mixes into the snow to create slush on top of the ice. Anybody down there? Come on, wake up. Oh, yes. Speckled trap. Speckled trap. Ah. <laughs> yes. Beautiful speckled trap. It's not what I was looking for, but. 
a really nice speckled trout. It's so cold. I have to get this fish back as quickly as possible. <laughs> All right, back to the water, beauty. Christian and Albert told me that lakers and speckled trout don't really get along that well around here. So I think I'm gonna go drill some holes a little further downstream to see if I can find some lakers. Fish up, fish up. I think that's a laker and a nice fish. Come on, fish, get your head in that hole. All right, nice laker. I just wish it was 20 pounds heavier, but still, it's a beautiful lake trout. I caught two fish, but no big one yet. I'd keep on drilling holes and jigging for that monster trout, but I have to get back to camp and check out what the guys caught in their net. Alexander and Christian are having a serious conversation. They thought they were gonna catch a lot of fish with the net, but only got a couple of small ones. And I released everything, thinking that they would already have enough for dinner. Okay, no, I guarantee that the next poisson, Mr. Mackenzie, I don't leave it out. I bring it here. I guess catch and release here, it's a big no-no. They, they do subsistence fishing, and uh, you know, so they have to, uh, to, uh, to have a lot of fish. Plus, they bring it back to the community for people that don't have access to, the, to this land and can't fish, so. We have no choice. We gotta get some food. So Alexander decides we should go hunting for grouse with Bernard, another guy staying at the camp. Okay, super. On the way, I went around the wrong side of a broken tree trunk. And now, I'm stuck, again. One thing I've learned so far is when your snowmobile is stuck in powder snow, you have to bring down the front end so you can get some traction in the back. I understand the theory, but clearly, I'm not quite there in practice yet. I feel really bad because I'm just slowing everyone down. Alexandre, les miennes, elles sont un peu moins traditionnelles, disons. Hein? <rire> C'est là où mettre tes raquettes, Cyril. Toi, tu les as mis en, en littéralement 5 secondes chacune. C'est ça. I'm seriously having problems with my little modern snowshoes. What kind of snowshoes are these? He went right over it and I went right through it. <laughs> oh my god. Ugh, useless. While I'm rolling around in the snow, Alexander is not wasting any time on the hunt. Man, the old man can shoot. He got three birds with two shells. Man, I feel a little bad for this bird, you know? Had I, had I kept the fish, it would still be running around in the snow. Now that we have enough for a meal, it's back to camp. Life here is very simple. You eat what you hunt or catch. Nothing's wasted. Life can't get better than this. Good food, good friends, good fishing, good times. Merci beaucoup, les amis. Today, I'm gonna catch my big laker. But before heading out, we have to do the daily chores. If not, we'll have nothing. Nothing to drink, nothing to burn, and at minus 30, nobody lasts very long. My chores for the morning are pretty straightforward. Chop some wood, get some water. Usually on fishing trips, I try to stay away from the heat, but on this one, I gotta make my own. Because let me tell you, it's, uh, it's cold here. 
In the summertime, finding drinking water around here is very easy. It's everywhere. But in the winter, it's a whole different story. I should have drilled a new hole. Because opening this one is a pain. That's a workout. The kind of thing you take for granted at home, you know, when you turn on the tap and you get some water here, not quite the case. You could do it with snow, but it has no volume. So you gotta go back to the holes, drill a hole, or use the hole that, that is used by the camp. <laughs> Unreal. <laughs> Everything freezes around here. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> what am I doing here? Honestly. <sighs> Beautiful. It's hot today. <sighs> Weather's nice. Blue skies. Those are not pine trees. They're palm trees. Albert and Christian also fish the traditional Inu way. And just like André, they use natural bait. We have to pay attention when we make des apports. We say that the la grise is fier. Yeah, huh? Look at the size of that bait. That is huge. We're in fresh water here. We're in Canada. We're not catching sharks. <laughs> We're trying to catch a lake trout, a monster one though. Because those fish, they have huge mouths, very big mouths. So what's going to happen is that the lake trout is going to turn around the white fish thinking, hmm, that looks good. I want to take that hole, you know? And it's exactly what's going to happen. The lake trout is going to turn around that, that white fish thinking, hmm, I really want to eat that. And usually they take the fish, they swallow the fish head first. So it's gonna swallow the fish head first, the, 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 the white fish, and when it's gonna start feeling some tension, the line, the rope actually, it's gonna to wanna to try to get rid of that bait that's in their throat. But the problem, that's gonna get stuck by the, by the hook here. And uh, let me tell you, whatever, whatever takes that bait, he's gonna be big. <laughs> Christian and I head out to one of his favorite spots. While he sets up his traditional lines, I keep on jigging with a spoon. Big fish. Ah, oui, ça prend du. Ouais, ouais, bien bon. Yeah, it's definitely a nice fish. Whoa. Oh, hey, it's a belle treat, huh? Wait, 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 wait. Oh. Oh. It's either a big lake trout or, or a really big pike. Oh. Uh, I don't like that. You know, it's rubbing against the, uh, the ice on the edges of the, uh, the hole. Oh. <laughs> it's just like a, exactly the same thing as jigging in, in, in salt water in, in the ocean. You know, butterfly jigging, you fish vertically, and when you get a hit, oh. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's gotta be a big fish. I've been on this fight for, for at least six or seven minutes. Easy. It's as if you put this technique, the Inuits would be a little bit of... I've been on this fight for so long that he, <laughs> what he said, he said, and uh, that's why my, my ancestors wouldn't use that, you know, like this technique, because otherwise they would be frozen on the ice right, right there. <laughs> and I don't think he would be a hero <sighs> to tell me that. Okay, it's coming, it's coming, I see. Oh, the fish doesn't want to stick it. It's heading oh, in the hole. All right, I've got it. Yes. 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 Beautiful lake trout. Look at the beautiful colors on that fish. The yellow hue on the fish's flanks. Beautiful. Tu l'as vu? Ah, it's not that much. Amen pour Alexandre, non? Oui, pour Alexandre, oui. A beautiful lake trout, but I'm sure I can catch a bigger one. As for now, it's time for lunch. The guys are preparing the fish for a traditional shore lunch. Meanwhile, they sent me out to get some wood. Let's just say that this part is a little less traditional. I found a perfect tree that is already dead, dry, and still standing. Ah! But to make sure I don't lose an arm falling through the snow with a chainsaw, I have to pack down the snow around the trunk to be more stable. You gotta be motivated here. Put down a tree. Do 
the advantage of cutting your own wood is that it heats you up twice. First, when you cut it. Second, when you, when you burn it. As much as I like to release my fish, it's pretty hard to pass on a nice lake trout fillet. Plus, it really helps to fight the cold. Mmm. Bye, Bell. Mmm, right. so tasty. Feels so good to eat something hot, especially the freshly caught fish. We just caught it right there about five minutes ago. No, maybe 10. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not giving up on my giant trout yet, but today's the return to Shefferville. We don't have enough gas left to make it back, though, but that's not a problem. There's a bush pilot flying out towards East Labrador, and he's dropping off a barrel of gas for us. In this kind of environment, the only way to survive is by helping each other out. And that's what people do up here. That was the first time I see a, a plane landing on, a, on, a, on snow. That was really cool. Really amazing. C'est quoi, c'est un fût de bière? Eh ouais. Ah, c'est bon. Il faut regarder les eaux d'abord. <rire> bon. Even though I didn't catch the monster liquor I wanted, I have to head back to Shefferville. But at least I'll get one last chance to land a huge lake trout there. Last night, Christian told me that I was wanting it too much. According to Inu belief, it has to be the animal that wants to offer itself to us, not the other way around. He also told me that I should visit a shaman to purify myself and get a closer connection with nature. I'm hardly in the door, and the shaman is prepping me for a sweat lodge ritual. Uh, that's going to be quite an experience. It's, uh, it's the first time I try this. This is uh, Jean-Marie is a shaman, so he's invited me to to his sweat lodge, and it's meant to purify me. On va chercher une rose cérine. Heated stones are brought into the tent so that the shaman can splash water over them and create a lot of steam. What an amazing experience. It's impossible for me to explain just what happened in there, but it was intense. Even though I'm kind of lost in my thoughts right now, there's one thing I haven't forgotten about, that monster lake trout. Since I'm back in Shefferville, I get in touch with Andre and Chani, the same guys I started this adventure with. They invite me to head out to one of their favorite fishing spots not too far away. And here we go again drilling a few holes to maximize our chances of catching a big lake trout. And then, I keep jigging. It's pretty cool actually fishing in a hole like this. It's really mysterious. You have no idea what's going on down there. You can't see anything. Everything goes on here in your, in your mind. You can imagine that the fish going around the spoon and looking at it, looking at it. Fish on! Ah, dropped it again. I just lost a pretty big fish. That was a boom. That was quite a hit. I can't believe I just lost that fish. It might have been my last shot at a big laker. Nice fish. <laughs> That's quite a fight I'm getting right here. I think we got a big trout here. Yeah, the line is only 10 pounds, so I can't really put a lot of pressure on that fish. Otherwise, I might break it off, and that's a big fish. What I don't like is that the, uh, the line is rubbing against the, uh, the ice at the bottom of the, uh, the, the hole, and it's pretty sharp, so that might cut me right off there. Hey, it's marrant, j'avais froid aux mains, mais là, je sens plus rien. I think that fish is right there. 
Yes, its head is right by the hole. I think it's a monster trout, really. It's fighting like crazy. Come on, get your head in that hole, fish. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a nice one. Oh, oh yes. Oh. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Now I'm happy. That's a nice lake trout right there. Nice fish. Avec une canne à pêche dans le fond. Vous êtes sûr que ça vous dérange pas si je la remets Non, vas-y. Oh. Ah. oh, my hands, man. Ah. Yes. <laughs> ça marche finalement la cuillère. <laughs> Merci beaucoup. I came here to catch a monster lake trout on the ice. And I ended up living a true northern and cultural experience with my new friends. Merci. Merci beaucoup. Even though the cold was brutal, what am I doing here? The scenery, the snowmobiles, the fishing, and the amazing people made me forget about the sub-zero temperatures. And I got to live one of my best adventures yet. Oh. <laughs> Woohoo! Yes! Sure, I got stuck with my snowmobile a couple of times. But in the end, all was good. I even got to snowboard behind a snowmobile. Ice fishing in the Great White North is not easy. You have to be ready to take the pain on a trip like this. And every fish caught is well deserved. This kind of fishing is great, and I loved it. But let me tell you, it's no vacation. Beautiful. It's hot today. <sighs> Weather's nice. Blue skies. Those are not pine trees. They're palm trees. I think I'm going to go to bed. Come on, show me all the respect here. Came all the way here, drilled a hole, showed you some light. The light of the sun. This is the light of the sun. You should be coming here and checking it out. I'm a walking popsicle. 